Since the outbreak of COVID-19 and the attendant ban on public gatherings, most churches across the globe have switched from conventional church services to holding services via online and social media platforms. This development has created a surge in the number of churches streaming online, while others are still making use of other conventional media platforms like TV and radio to conduct Sunday services. To share how this online experience has been for the Catholic Church, I'm joined by Reverend Father Patrick Alumuku. Thank you, Reverend Father, for joining us on the news. Good morning. And how are you doing this morning, sir? Oh, very well, thank you. What has been the experience so far holding services without the usual church gathering for you? Well, it's been quite exciting. Um, we have a TV based here in Abuja. It's called the Catholic Television of Nigeria. Uh, during the Holy Week, we spent um, the entire week um, televising and also streaming the events uh, celebrated in the ceremonies, which we are led by the Archbishop of Abuja, Archbishop Ignatius Kaigama. And um, we found that we had... Um, a tremendous following, not only in uh, Abuja or Nigeria, mm -hmm. but all over Africa. And um, in many cases, we had also thousands and thousands of Catholics following us online um, all over the world, in Europe, in the Americas, and in Asia. This morning, I found that um, mm -hmm. um, there were about 10 churches in Abuja that we are celebrating mass online you know for the catholic church you can you can, you can imagine and understand that um, uh, sunday mass is not obligate is not optional it's obligatory so for people not to be in church at this time it's extremely um, not conceivable for them so they are finding a way to participate at the mass so this is making a lot of, of sense to them a typical uh, Mass in the Catholic Church is usually characterized by several ceremonies, the Holy Communion and the other things. At, at one point or the other, are these taking place online? Yes, um, there is one aspect of this meeting, um, which is the aspect of uh, the uh, Communion. As you know, the typical Mass is divided, divided into two parts, the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Um, however, there is what is referred to as a spiritual communion in the sense that if you are not able to attend Mass because you are sick, you are impaired, or you have a difficulty, um, your participation at the Mass is considered to be a spiritual communion. So. We kind of um, have advised people to, to continue to follow these this masses and uh, to accept them as a spiritual communion moment. Now, Reverend Father, prior to COVID-19, the, the, the option of online services, was it even at, at the brink of your thought for services? Well, uh, not uh, myself, but as you know, the, the church had already... Uh, been involved in televising uh, uh, masses, you know. For example, at Christmas, the entire 1.3 billion Catholics in the world are link up to Rome for the mass of Christmas with the Pope, and so uh, together we 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 participate at that mass. We sing the songs with him. We we we, we follow the prayers uh, with the Pope, and so on and so forth. So. This had been so. But, you know, the Catholic Church had not been as much online as it has been at the moment. And this is a major breakthrough. In fact, we are quite happy that um, even some of our, our church leaders uh, and members who were not um, very concerned about the importance of social media um, and of communication in the church, I've come to discover how important it will be. So for us um, who are working in the area of communications, we discover that uh, we find that the future will be uh, a much brighter future uh, for communications, you know. Um, yeah. As we go along, as you see, in Nigeria we had um, the Pentecostal mm -hmm. churches that, uh, you know, 
had a way, um, we are way ahead of uh, the Catholic Church uh, in their presence on uh, social media and also on television. I think that the future will be much different for the Catholic Church uh, from COVID-19 onwards. Finally, Reverend Father, before I let you go this morning, we still have some skeptics, some conservatives who still find it hard to believe. Why should churches shut down because of the outbreak of a virus? I need your ammunition in this. Yeah. Um, this is a question that uh, many people are asking. And at the beginning, it looks quite um, uh, normal uh, that if the Pope had said, shut down the churches, uh, we uh, down the line would shut, shut down the churches. But as we go on, we find that there are what others are considering conspiracy theories, but which actually are coming out to sound mm -hmm. as if there is actually a, a plan to take over the world in the new order. And, um, and part of that plan is to affect the, 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 the spiritual um, uh, sector or spiritual realm of the world. And this is uh, getting very, very uh, worrying with a number of people who are saying this um, internationally and whose videos are being shut down. Uh, YouTube has put down uh, Dr. Bashir Buta's videos, several of them, and I think his opinion is something that you know everyone should um, go online and see. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a doctor some, somewhere in the south of um, the U.S. who is saying that the numbers which are being shot, which are being put up in the uh, in the media, in the formal media, are actually uh, exaggerated, or if they are, they are nothing extraordinary. Uh, a group of doctors in the U.S. have said that the number of people who are dying, the numbers which are being put there, are the same numbers of people who died of flu in the past, if that be so. So why is the new uh, flu giving so much attention? So if people had died of 100,000 or 200,000 in the U.S. the previous year of a flu, why is so much attention being given to this? And this is what is being said all along, and they are using this to talk about social distancing, which will then eventually affect church participation and, um, and, and spiritual activities in the future. So these questions are becoming not just conspiracy theories, but they look like there's something real. And also because when they speak, they are then being put out of the social media or they are being put out of YouTube. A number of those platforms have been brought down we're getting very big, uh, big concerned about this. I think that the, the world should ask those questions on why the, the same people who are talking about the need for social distancing and the future of, of post-COVID-19 uh, uh, are the same people who are, are touting the ideas of uh, the vaccine, uh, which appears that they have a, a financial plan for themselves. I mean, to think, for example, that... Um, that the Gates has left Microsoft as a member of the board and left Microsoft as member now as an ordinary member of the board, earlier as a chairman, now he has left as a member, and is now not as a medical doctor, but is putting all his efforts now in trying to, um, um, to, to, to now get attention in an area that's going to be a, three, a tenth of trillions mm -hmm. of, of, of dollar income. This kind of issues are, are becoming a little bit uh, contentious oh, right, and right, right, right. Uh, getting worrisome for us. All right, Renfrew, I wish we could go on with you, but we're out of time. Thank you very much, Renfrew, that Patrick Alumuku. It's been such a joy to have you join us on News on the Hour. I thank you so much.